people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Amidst diplomatic strides towards regional stability, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Astana concluded with India's External Affairs Minister S. De Shankar playing a pivotal role. Engaging with key counterparts including China, Tajikistan, Russia and Belarus, S. De Shankar echoed Prime Minister Narendra Modi's emphasis on prioritizing counter-terrorism efforts for safeguarding both regional and global peace. Take a look. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit concluded in Astana with significant diplomatic strides towards enhancing regional stability and cooperation. Indian External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar played a crucial role during the summit, engaging in talks with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and holding bilateral meetings with counterparts from Tajikistan, Russia and Belarus. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's message, delivered by S. J. Shankar, reiterated the imperative of prioritizing counter-terrorism efforts to safeguard regional and global peace. We got a very strong position uh, from SEO on this whole challenge of terrorism. Uh, and if you looked at the Prime Minister's remarks, uh, our central thrust was that the primary purpose of SEO, the original purpose, was to combat terrorism and combat extremism. Uh, and uh, we therefore got an endorsement today very explicitly combating terrorism, all forms and manifestations, including cross-border terrorism, uh, that ter terror financing, harboring terrorists. So if you look actually at the whole terrorism paragraph, uh, it is much, much stronger than anything which the SEO has said before. The world is currently In his speech at the SEO summit in Astana, External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar, representing Prime Minister Narendra Modi, emphasized that the foreign policies of the nine member countries are founded on principles such as mutual respect for territorial integrity, non-interference in internal affairs and refraining from the use of force. The speech also addressed challenges like climate change and the responsible deployment of emerging technologies like artificial intelligence. We agreed on cooperating on energy, on environment, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, this time, uh, SEO uh, endorsed Mission Life. Uh, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, there was even even our One, uh, one Earth, uh, One Family, One Future found uh, reflection in the Astana Declaration. So we felt that many of the, uh, you know, I would say, concepts, philosophy, outlook, and also the practical things that we had put forward in SEO in the last few years, they all have been internalized by SEO. Uh, there have been a debate, many countries have accepted it. So you really were left with that feeling of satisfaction. India is actively pursuing goals such as reducing emissions, shifting to alternative fuels, promoting electric vehicles and developing infrastructure resilient to climate impacts. Additionally, India is one of the nations developing a national strategy for AI and collaborating within the SEO to outline a roadmap for AI cooperation. The SEO traces its origin back to the Shanghai Five, which was formed in 1996 and consisted of China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Following the dissolution of the USSR in 1991, the region faced challenges such as rising extremism and ethnic tensions. In response, 
this initial group focused on security cooperation. Building on this foundation, the SEO was formally established on June 15, 2001 in Shanghai as an international organization. It expanded its membership by including Uzbekistan as its sixth member. Over time, additional countries joined such as India, Iran and Pakistan, broadening its scope and influence. Currently, Afghanistan and Mongolia hold observer status within the organization. Residents of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir are rallying for urgent road repairs due to decades of neglect by the administration, hindering access to the region's natural beauty. The poor road connectivity and unfulfilled promises of infrastructure development have sparked outcry among locals and leaders. During a press conference, local residents highlighted the issue, revealing a stark contrast between promised budget allocations and actual funds directed towards road maintenance. A report. In Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir, there is an abundance of natural beauty. But very few tourists and locals are able to reach these destinations. Poor road connectivity in the region is a major cause for this. For decades, the administration has been constantly neglecting infrastructure development in POJK. To make their voices heard, distressed residents and leaders held a press conference and demanded that the government repair these roads as soon as possible. बजट जो मौजूदा हुआ है छह अरब रुपया इस वक्त महकमा शहाब के लिए रखे गए वजीर आजम जब बाल तशरीफ लाए हम उनसे मिले हमें उन्होंने ये गुजारिश की थी कि मुझे अगर बुखार ने बजट दिया तो जो बजट होगा उसमें आपकी जो स्कीम है या जो इसके लिए फंड है हमारे पेशी करें बुखार ने जो हमारा नॉर्मल का बजट था वो तो पूरा जो बजट बुक ये बता रही है कि चवालीस अरब या इकतालीस अरब जो था उसके मुताबिक तो इनके पास वो रिलीज या जो कुछ उन्होंने वो पेश कर दी है लेकिन जो बजट बुक अब बता रही है उसमें आज के दिन तक हमारी सड़क के लिए कोई फंड एलोकेशन नहीं की The sheer negligence of the administration can be seen in the recent budget allocation wherein only 6 billion Pakistani rupees were allocated for the highways department out of a huge budget of 264 billion Pakistani rupees. Moreover, not a single rupee has been spent on the ill-fated road connecting Bag, a prominent region of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The poor condition of roads is not limited to Bag alone. If one thinks the prime city of Muzaffarabad is any different, the potholes on every other meter of the road should dispel these doubts. Considering all these hardships, the demand for road restoration from the government seems justified in every sense. <laughs> हमने उन सब को एक एक करके कहा कि ये हमारा मसला है इसके लिए आप कोई चीज करें लेकिन बदकिस्मती ये है कि आज तक इसके लिए कोई बात और एक और अलमिया अलमिया दूसरा अलमिया ये है कि एक हमारा सुदर गली में एक किलोमीटर सड़क जो थी वो आज से तकरीबन तीन साल पहले उसका टेंडर हो और वो टेंडर होके रात जब हम तक हम सोटाला गए हुए थे वहाँ और उसके अलावा भी वहाँ अभी तक काम शुरू नहीं हो सकता Roads in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir, no matter where they are located, have consistently suffered from deep-seated corruption within the administration. Residents highlight that even when some amount is spent on road infrastructure, the material used is of such poor quality that the roads get washed away in a single rain. In such a situation, the distressed public either protest or hold press conferences to make their demands heard at higher levels. But the Stooge administration pays no heed to their clamoring voices. Time now for Asia this week, the stories from across the continent. Dozens of men and women from Pakistan's minority Christian community staged a protest in Karachi against the death sentence awarded by a court to a Christian man over blasphemy charges. A court in the city of Sahiwal in Punjab province has sentenced a Christian man Ehsan Shan Masih to death for allegedly sharing blasphemous content on social media after a mob attacked on Christians last year. 
According to the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, there have been numerous cases of baseless blasphemy accusations over the years, disproportionately affecting minority groups. Several incidents have resulted in deadly violence against individuals accused of blasphemy or their communities. Shuri Castle in Japan's Okinawa serves as a spiritual symbol for all Japanese. Built in the 15th century, it has faced adversity twice, once during the Pacific War when it was burned and destroyed, and again in 2019 due to a fire accident. However, it has been designated a World Heritage Site. In 2022, Shimizu Corporation initiated construction efforts embodying the collective hope to restore Shuri Castle. In May, it commemorates the mid-term ridgepole raising ceremony following a style inherited from the 8th century. The main event today is placing the ridgepole on the roof. Participants pull red and white ropes to raise the ridgepole onto the roof, guided by the ceremony leader's instructions. Relatives and designated individuals take part in pulling the ropes in sequence. The ridgepole represents the final component in completing the roof construction. Skilled individuals ascend to the roof's peak, strike wooden hammers to secure the ridgepole in place. This ceremony is conducted to pray for the successful completion of construction and the enduring safety of the castle and its inhabitants. あの、銀町刻めたことが、あの、非常に嬉しく思っております。あの、出雲大社の60年の一度の建て替えですか。その他大城祭ですとか、ま、全国各地で携わさせていただいておりますんで、そういった意味で、えっと、いろんなところでや
Japan began circulating its first new banknotes in 20 years on July 3rd, featuring three-dimensional portraits of the founders of financial institutions and a women's university in an attempt to frustrate counterfeiters. The notes use printed patterns to generate holograms of the portraits facing different directions, depending on the angle of view, employing a new technology that Japan's National Printing Bureau says is the world's first for paper money. Let's now talk about the recent victory of the Indian cricket team in the T20 World Cup, which has sparked an outpouring of national pride and joy. Fans from every corner of the country came together in jubilation, waving flags and cheering their team's remarkable triumph. For many, this win represents more than just a sporting achievement. It's a moment of collective fulfilment after a 17-year wait. Take a look. The streets of India erupted in jubilation as the Indian cricket team clinched a thrilling victory over South Africa in the 2020 World Cup final, marking their second title in this format after a 17-year wait. Fans across the nation danced, waved flags and cheered loudly in celebration of their team's remarkable achievement. Upon their return to New Delhi, the victorious team received a hero's welcome greeted by ecstatic fans who showered them with admiration and support. The T20 World Cup trophy, which had eluded India for nearly two decades, was finally back home. The head coach of the winning team, Rahul Dravid, visibly moved by the team's performance, expressed his immense pride and admiration for the players' resilience in challenging situations throughout the tournament. I have felt very short of words over the last few hours. Uh, I, I just could not be more prouder for this team. Uh, the way we've had to fight uh, in difficult situations. And even today, I think it was a great testament to the fight in the team to lose three wickets in the first six, to be in the kind of position we were in with 30 balls to go. Uh, but we never kept, you know, the boys just kept fighting, they kept believing. In a country where cricket is often touted as the religion, India's glorious win was met with tears of joy from the players and enthusiastic fans, marking the team's first global title since the 2013 Champions Trophy. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also extended his congratulations to the team, recognizing their victory as a moment of immense national pride. इस भव्य विजय के लिए सभी देशवासियों की तरफ से बहुत बहुत बधाई आज 140 करोड़ देशवासी आपके इस शानदार प्रदर्शन के लिए गर्व अनुभव कर रहे हैं इन इंडिया जेनरेशन हैव ग्रोन अप idolizing cricketing legends, cheering through victories and enduring disappointments together. For the passionate fans of Indian cricket, the victory was nothing short of a dream come true. This was a great day for the whole country. The Bharti team was very proud of this year. We were very proud of our team. 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 The T20 World Cup victory was not merely about winning a championship, it was about reclaiming glory on the global stage after a long wait. Indian cricket fans have seen their team come close in various tournaments, but lifting the T20 World Cup trophy brought a sense of fulfillment and pride that resonated deeply across the nation. In homes, streets, offices and schools, conversations revolved around match strategies, player performances and the collective hopes of a cricket-crazy nation. Every boundary, every wicket taken was celebrated with fervour and every setback met with collective determination. The unity forged through cricket transcended boundaries of region, language and background binding together 
diverse communities in a shared passion. Let's delve into Sikhism in India, exploring its origins and one of its most cherished traditions, the Langa or community kitchen. Langar is not just about providing food, it's a symbol of breaking down barriers and fostering a sense of community and inclusivity. We'll also take you to the Bangla Sahib Gurudwara, a prominent Sikh place of worship in New Delhi, which stands as a beacon of Sikh faith and service. Sikhism is one of the world's youngest major religions, yet it is rich in history and tradition. It emerged in the Punjab region of South Asia in the 15th century, founded by Guru Nanak Dev Ji, a visionary spiritual leader. His teachings emphasize the importance of devotion to one God, equality among all humans and selfless service to others. Guru Nanak's message resonated deeply with people from all walks of life and he led the foundation for Sikhism's core principles, which are enshrined in the Guru Granth Sahib, the holy scripture of the Sikhs. Over time, Guru Nanak was succeeded by a lineage of nine Gurus, each contributing to the development and expansion of Sikhism. One of the most distinctive aspects of the Sikh religion is the tradition of Langar. Established by Guru Nanak, the Langar is a free community kitchen where all are welcome, regardless of their background or social status. It symbolizes the principle of equality and serves as a reminder of the importance of sharing with those in need. Today, the Langar continues to be an integral part of Sikh worship, with Gurudwaras around the world offering free meals to anyone who walks through their doors. In a sprawling kitchen of Bangla Sahib Gurudwara in New Delhi, volunteers work tirelessly, chopping vegetables, stirring huge cauldrons of lentils and kneading dough. It's a symphony of action and devotion fueled by the belief in equality and community. Langar is not just about feeding the hungry, it's about breaking barriers of caste, creed and class. Here everyone is welcome and everyone eats together. एक बहुत बड़ा सदांत है कि गुरु दे कार्यवेच बिना किसी दी क्लास बिना किसी दी कास्ट पूछन दे जानन दे पंगत वेच बैठा के एक समान ये लंगर बर्ताया जानता है और लंगर ना ता कनक दी रोटी नू कहने ने ना लंगर किसे दाल सब्जी नू कहने ने सिख तरम दे वेच ओ पदार्थ और सोई ओ किचन जड़ी पवित्रता नाल तैयार की थी जाए बाणी पढ़ दिया तो एक समान वर्ताई जाए उस रूल अंदर करते The tradition serves as a ritualistic expression of the equality of all humans. The Langa tradition continues to nourish not just the body but also the soul. For in the spirit of Langa, all are truly one. It's an amazing tradition and uh, I believe they should be shared all over the place. It's a really good, uh, good initiative and um, bringing the community together that much, it's really a nice, nice thing. Yeah, and the food is delicious. I think it's a great t t tradition that they, don't, uh, that they accept everyone um, to eat with and um, especially like people who may not be able to eat any other way. I think it's great. The langa never stops, and on average, the community kitchen at Bangla Sahib typically feeds roughly 40,000 people a day for free. On religious holidays and weekends, this number goes up to 1 lakh. This incredible feat is made possible through donations and volunteers. The Sikh community gives 10% of their earnings, which we call the swand, which is the basic of the Sikh religion as well, which is the message of our Gurus as well, to give the daswan to the needy places or the needy people. The spirit of Langar also extends beyond the walls of the Gurudwara. Sikhs have a long history of stepping up during times of crisis. 
from natural disasters to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Sikh community around the world has been at the forefront of relief efforts, offering food, shelter and assistance to those affected. उस टाइम ये स्त्रांदा सी कि दुनिया दे उत्ते हर चीज बंद होगी सी ते जे एक बंद नहीं होया ते आदमी नो पोख लगनी नहीं बंद होई जे दे बेच्चे ही एक दिन दे बेच्चे एक टाइम साढे तीन लाख आदमी यहाँ दा लंगर तैयार करके पेज दिन दे सी ते अरदास कर दे हैं चलो सानु सेवा करंदा भाई गुरु ने मौक Volunteers often take to the streets, distributing food packets to the homeless and needy, embodying the Sikh principle of Sarbat da Bhala, the welfare of all. The spirit of giving is an important message that comes from three golden rules set by Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and that are Nam Japo, Kirat Karo, and Vandha Chakko, which means meditate on God's name, earn an honest living, and lastly, share what you possess, including food wealth and wisdom. The tradition of Langar embodies the timeless values of unity and compassion. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.